Hello everybody, this is Brian here from NCAP. I wanted to come on for a moment and hopefully um, help you to work smarter and not harder. Um, I've been on the phone um, since yesterday off and on with a few of you out there in the field and you all are trying to figure out how to make it easier for yourselves in regards to virtual family visits. From what I'm understanding, a lot of you are using your cell phones to do FaceTime callings um, to family members. And some of you are even having, for one family member, you're having to call like 10 people. So that's a lot of work. So I kind of have a solution and I hope that you will uh, use it and that it will help you tremendously. And it's also using Zoom. Um, Zoom is a free account. It's a free program that you can download. Um, the application, you don't really have to download anything to your computer, you just have to open up a few windows when it asks you to. Um, the family member can do the same on their computer or they can download the app on their telephone. And the way this is going to work is you have, um, when you create your Zoom account, you're given a personal meeting ID and those are for instant meetings. Each meeting that you have is only, it's only going to give you 40 minutes of time up to 100 people. So you can do 10 meetings, but they have to be individual meetings and only for 40 minutes each, up to 100 people per meeting. And the way that you're going to do this is you're going to utilize a sheet that I showed you. You'll put the date, the client's name, the time that the client wishes to Zoom that's available, and then you're going to send, you're going to contact the responsible party and let them know what you're doing and explain to them that they need to have to access Zoom either via the computer or they need to download the app on their phone. And this goes for any of the other family members that wish to join this meeting. So once you do that and you confirm it and you send your personal meeting ID to that family member, they're going to disperse it to all the other family members. So if Today at 10 p.m. or tonight at 10 p.m., uh, Brian is going to be Zooming at 10 o'clock with his family members. Then when Brian, the activity person, I'm not saying that you're there at 10 o'clock. This is just an example. Um, if you're there with the patient, the client, with the computer or um, a tablet, um, and you click on your personal meeting ID and it opens up the Zoom for you. And then all the other family members of that belong to me, Brian, they click on their link that was sent to them by the um, responsible party. They all come onto the Zoom at one time and they can see me and I can see all of them and they can see each other and we can have a 40 minute conversation, a virtual family visit. So I'm gonna just show you real quickly once you create your Zoom account, share my screen, so bear with me one second. Hopefully you all can see this on the other end because I can't tell at the moment. Um, once you create your Zoom account and you get logged in, you're going, this is your dashboard. Over to the left, it says personal and then profile. Underneath your profile, you have personal meeting ID and you have this link that starts with HTTPS. That's the link that you're gonna copy, okay? When you copy that, that's what you're gonna paste into the email to send to the responsible party. And you're also gonna use in your web browser up here is where you would put that and just click enter and follow the instructions on your end when you're in there with the resident, okay? You need to make sure that you have a, a camera, of course, and that the audio is working. Uh, you could do all that by testing um, in your, your setup um, under um, settings. Uh, you can do that. And then the next part would be the virtual family visit time schedule. So as you can see, um, I have an example up here. Um, so it's got the date, the client's name, the time slot, the main family contact that I'm sending the link to and the email address of that main family contact. Have you confirmed it? Maybe you're setting this up three or four days in advance. You need to confirm it and make sure that they remember because you don't want to go into the resident's room and do this and then nobody be 
there during the time slot because they forgot. And then I also put a, a slot for the number of people that attended. So when you do your progress note, you can include that information if you choose to. So I hope that this information will help you to work smarter, not harder. If you have any questions um, in regards to what I went over in this video, please feel free to make a comment, send me an email, um, and I will try to help you the best I can. On behalf of NCAP, we thank you all so much for all the hard work and dedication um, that you're putting forth right now, especially through this COVID-19 uh, virus. We know this is not easy, and you all have been phenomenal team players with everybody across the nation and sharing your wonderful ideas. Uh, please remember to go to the NCAP.org website under announcements and click on the link for the COVID-19 activity resources. We will be posting things um, throughout the week on there. It will be updated, if not daily, at least every other day there will be new stuff added. Um, and again, thank you all so much, and I hope you all have a great rest of the work week and a wonderful weekend.